Hi again then guys, and so we have not featured a car review from Forza Motorsport 4 for a few weeks now. We've been focusing in more on the Gran Turismo news and Goodwood and that kind of stuff, but what better way to get back into it than with arguably one of the absolute best cars in Forza 4, and most definitely one of the fastest, and some people would even say the fastest all-round streetcar in the game. Although, of course, streetcar is a very loose term for this vehicle, because it's a car that does not appear in very many games, for fairly obvious reasons, and for those who are unfamiliar with this car, the Joss GT1, sometimes called the JP1, or just the Joss Supercar, which I believe is what they refer to it as in Project Gotham, it's a car which is actually from Australia. An Australian supercar. Pretty cool concept, straight off the bat. But you probably find some aspects of the car to be fairly familiar. The shape, for instance, is very reminiscent of a certain iconic British supercar with F1 in its name. And that is no coincidence, because some of the people involved in building the Joss were actually from McLaren. So the car has a very, very McLaren F1-esque vibe to it, certainly visually, but even in terms of the way it performs. And even the specs, although far from being the same, certainly have a lot of similarities to the McLaren. The McLaren F1 had this larger, naturally aspirated engine in a relatively compact, pretty lightweight package, which allowed the car to have not just good straight line performance, but even more so good performance on the track as essentially a road going race car, which of course was very much so of its time as that 90s, mid 90s in particular, GT1 style machine. Now this one doesn't have a racing variant, but it doesn't really matter too much because it's, it essentially is a race car for the street, kind of feels like a, a Noble M600 on steroids after an extreme weight loss diet. It's ultra lightweight, you can make it actually one of the lightest street cars in the game. And even stock, you're literally only looking at 940 kilos for this car. That's insane. That's actually close to the weight of some Lamar prototypes. So what's the engine, for those who are unfamiliar? Well, instead of that big 6.1 naturally aspirated BMW V12 that the McLaren uses, this uses a somehow quintessentially Australian sounding 6.8 litre naturally aspirated V8. I think that's a pretty cool sounding engine. It's relatively unique. You don't tend to hear of supercars having very large capacity V8s. They usually go for either really small V8s or really large V12s. Not so much large V8s. So I think that's a pretty cool, unique aspect of this one. Now that engine, despite the fact that it's very big, is funnily enough not as powerful as you might think. There are no turbos, no superchargers, 500 horsepower is what you're working with. So Gallardo levels of power, you're also putting out 442 pound-feet of torque. Those don't sound that impressive in the grand scheme of things. But when you remember that it only weighs 940 kilos and has some of the mines behind the McLaren F1 involved, it's pretty much guaranteed to be fast. In fact, in reality, this car, if I recall correctly, actually tested performance times and even top speed ratings somewhere in the region of what stuff like the Pagani Zonda and even the Gumper Apollo can do. Something like 0-60, I believe, in 2.9 seconds, and a top speed which I think was quoted at something like 211 miles per hour, which for a car with only 500 horsepower is very impressive. Now, that alone is enough to make it brilliant, kind of like the Forza equivalent to what the Nissan R390 was in the early days of, of Gran Turismo, this ridiculously OP streetcar which was technically allowed into those events, but really wasn't that fair. I mean, yes, it's a streetcar, but come on, it's, it's a GT1 car for the road. That's exactly what this feels like in Forza, and that is why it was so popular and also why it was so good. Because just like the Mosler, just like the Gumper, but arguably to an even further degree than those, this really does feel like a race car for the street. And the fact that it is technically still a prototype means that, of course, it may not have actually ended up being as good as it is in the game, or having specs, performance for instance, as good as the prototype was. Doubtless they'd have had to make some changes at least, actually making it a production vehicle. I haven't checked in on the news of how this car's going lately, but I haven't really heard anything about it, so I presume it hasn't actually come to fruition, which is a shame, because this is a very impressive car. And even though it has, as I said, those similarities to the Nissan R390 in terms of what it can do, there's actually another car in Gran Turismo which this reminds me of as well, and that's the Tommy Kyra ZZ2. It has a lot of similarities to how 
overwhelmingly good that thing is for a street car, and also for a very good price. Likewise, this car is very well priced in the game, 400,000 credits. It's already up there in the R3 category, but here's the clincher. Because it's not all that powerful, it's not high in the R3 class. It's only 718 PI points. So even in R3, you can make this thing crazy fast. Now, if I recall correctly, you can even supercharge it up to well over 800 horsepower. As I said, you can drop the weight even lower. You can legitimately make this thing lighter than an LMP1 on some occasions. And the result is insane. If you put the chin splitter and rear spoiler onto it as well, you're looking at nearly unparalleled cornering ability, to the point where even the Mosler would often lose to it in online lobbies, which is remarkable. Now, for me personally, I would still choose the Mosler every time, because I just prefer the car, but this thing was about as OP as you can get in Forza 4. It was constantly in online lobbies which would allow it and it was one of the very few street cars in the game that could not just challenge race cars like the Zonda R, the Mazda Furai, but more often than not you'd actually see it beating them, which is crazy. Top speed wise it wasn't as strong as some, if I recall correctly I think you could get it up around something like 250, maybe 260, so it certainly wasn't slow, but it didn't necessarily have the overwhelming straight line performance of the Hennessy's and the Ultimate Aeros and the Veyron Supersport, but slow it definitely wasn't, and it more than made up for it in particular, as I said, with that cornering ability. It wasn't as forgiving to drive as the Mosler, but when used correctly, it could pretty much wipe the floor with any other streetcar around the track. In fact, the only things which even came close would be the Ultima GTR and the Radical. That was pretty much it. Nothing else in a street sense, apart from, of course, those two and the Mosler, even had a look in. I mean, this car is so quick in Forza 4 that it made the Gumper Apollo look slow in comparison. And any car that can do that has got to be fast. It's one of those cards which I know a ton of people would absolutely love to see return to Forza, but the funny thing about it is, it's also kind of easy to forget that the car existed. I'm sure there are people who are even maybe watching this video who suddenly saw the thumbnail and went, oh yeah, the Joss, that was such a cool car, but it's strangely easy to forget about the car, because much like the McLaren F1, it's one of these cars which is so purely focused on what it can do on the track that it literally has no time for anything else. It does not care about looking good, it does not care about style, it doesn't care about having the fancy interior, I mean it's essentially just a stripped out roll cage race car inside. It's just pure function over form, to the nth degree. You've got to respect it for that, that's one of the reasons why I do prefer the Mosler, because it's such a gorgeous car as well, in my opinion, but for pure ability, the Mosler is a force to be reckoned with. Or the Joss, I should say, I think I said Mosler again. The Joss JT1 really is a force to be reckoned with. For 400 grand, it can destroy cars that are half the price, double the price, it doesn't even matter. Overall then, if you do go back to Forza 4, certainly check out this car, it's an absolute monster, and one which, in that weird kind of way, you can kind of forget was in the game even though it really was that good. But overall, that's it for my thoughts. Of course, stick around on the channel for more reviews of cars in Forza that are no longer in the game. And here's hoping we get it back at some point. That would be pretty nice. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.